I have with me Nick Bustamante. He is the manager of global operations engineering at Microsoft. Nick, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Nick, Microsoft has been using a modular containerized approach to build its data centers for a few years now. Gradually, um, you guys have been gradually refining it. The IT pack design is the latest. Um, is the company continuing research in data center design and should we expect different next generation Microsoft data centers? Definitely should expect uh, a lot of neat things coming from Microsoft. Uh, it's not always publicized as much, but uh, we're able to tap into a $9 billion uh, research budget that uh, Microsoft Research is able to play around with. And that really enables us to do a lot of neat things. Uh, generation 5, Generation 6 data centers are very much on the drawing board and uh, would expect to see those in the next couple of years. Today, Microsoft and other large enterprises that build data centers in a modular fashion all seem to design their own modules, even though most major uh, vendors often um, have their own containers, HP, uh, Dell, etc. What are the limitations that Microsoft has found with commercially available containers uh, that made the company choose to design its own? Yeah, certainly. I would say that uh, when we started down this road uh, approximately three years ago, we didn't see the level of innovation I think that we desired at the time uh, specific to the mechanical pieces of the container. We weren't seeing particularly energy efficient solutions and so we set about looking things differently from our own perspective trying to achieve a very low uh, PUE number, you know, trying to get to a very high efficiency. Um, we were able to share that with a lot of those vendors and some of the solutions that you'll see coming from them are a reflection of the things that we've done by ourselves and asked them to try and take to, to market for us on behalf of our partners as well. Mm -hmm. So um, then should we expect uh, Microsoft to use um, other vendors, containers in the future using the designs? Certainly, yes. The, the idea is to share it with the market, share it with uh, Microsoft partners, uh, not just for the benefit of Microsoft, but also so that other folks can take advantage of it. And of course, we can take advantage of the scale and hopefully drive that cost down for everyone. Do you see Microsoft possibly moving away from containers in the future, or is this an innovation that is here to stay for a while? I think it's innovation there to stay, but I would be uh, cautious of focusing just on the container. We view modularity as an overall uh, program. So the IT packs, for example, aren't built on a standard ISO or ISBU shipping container. But having said that, we certainly do have a number of ISO shipping containers with IT equipment inside of them. But that kind of that size of IT pack module, um, do you think that's here to stay for a while? I do. I think that the uh, you know, 23 foot, 40 foot containers, even the 53 foot containers are uh, useful for a lot of different applications. We don't focus on a single uh, size container uh, by any means. We look at a lot of different types of the uh, form factors for different types of applications. Uh, what is the company's infrastructure expansion strategy? How often does Microsoft build data centers and what kinds of forces impact those decisions? So it's, it's been no secret. You know, Steve Ballmer has stood up on stage and said we're spending billions investing in uh, the cloud, investing in infrastructure, and he's exactly correct. We're spending billions every year developing new sites. Uh, I can't give you an exact number. Microsoft has more than 10 facilities, less than 100. That's what we always publicize. Uh, I will say that the sites that we're adding in North America and elsewhere are fairly large when we look at the rest of the market. So on the orders of, of tens of megawatts per site. And we're averaging probably two to three of those per calendar year. And what, what kind of um forces, what kind of uh, factors influence these decisions? That's an excellent question. That we, we see globalization really being a key factor in that. Uh, I think that the uh, information age was upon us, and I think that what we're seeing right now is the development of a lot of the technologies in areas that uh, perhaps haven't necessarily had them as much, uh, not necessarily first world countries in other words. And so we're seeing those things finally hitting the market, and we're seeing uh, the critical mass developed for that type of application, uh, whether it's search, whether it's uh, email, uh, things like Xbox Live even, we're seeing very rapid growth with. 
Nick Bustamante, thank you very much. Thank you.